introduce us that way. Hi, everybody. Welcome to, is this episode five? Yes. Yeah. Episode five of The Coffee Clatch. Um, we are talking about movies today, and so I am appropriately outfitted with my Bell mug, which says, it's hard to be a beauty when mornings are a beast. Oh, I like that. I feel that. Yeah. Um, mine is, I don't have any movie mugs, so I just chose one that is, uh, that makes it made for me, which Yay! for my Bell and Cops series. It's, it's on brand, so. It is on brand. Yeah, mine is too. Yes. So, um, yeah, we're talking about movies today. So I think I'm going to start it off with, do you know what the first movie you saw in theater was? Um, I want to say it was a Disney movie. Like, I want to say it was actually like uh, Sleepy, or, uh, Snow White or Cinderella, like obviously they came out before I was born, but like I think it was like replayed in the movie theater. Yeah, they used to do that a lot. Yeah, so I think it was either Snow White or Cinderella, like in the actual movie theater. My first movie that I saw in the theaters was The Little Mermaid. And um my mom missed most of it because my brother was like two and he spilled an entire like glass like he got a thing of soda and immediately spilled the entire thing on himself and she had to take him out of the movie because he was crying but so I um watched it with my dad um and yeah that was the first movie that I ever saw in theaters and um that has been formative for me in general because as you will uh as, for those of you who don't know um I really like Disney um and that started I think, like, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I think the 90s was, like, a golden era of Disney yeah. cartoons. Like, that was because uh, it was um, The Little Mermaid and, um, like, it was really a lot of the princess movies. Like, there were the classic princess movies, and then I feel like there wasn't anything for a long time. Yeah. You had Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty, and then, um, but then on the, a lot of the other ones. ones. Like, yeah. Fox and Brown and Lady the Tramp. But, like, the 90s, like, Little, Little Mermaid, which was one of my favorites. I remember, like, pretending to be a Little Mermaid, like, anytime you were in a pool. Yes. Or on to. a rock yeah. or a couch. Um, and uh, Aladdin. Aladdin uh, was so great. Um, loved that one. And I remember seeing uh, Lion King in the theaters. Yeah. Nice. Lion King was amazing. I remember watching, like, all the featurettes on it before it came out, like, because they would play it on the Disney Channel all the time and, like, show how they brought the live lions into the studio to, um, how they brought the live lions into the studio to, um, like, draw them. So they actually oh, yeah. observed the lions and things like that. So, um, I remember that and I remember being really excited for that. And then, um, it was like, uh, well, Mulan was later, but there was Pocahontas, which I just rewatched because yeah. I've been on like a serious binge rewatching everything because of Disney Plus. I yes, just rewatched Lady and the Tramp too. I haven't. Oh, we did. We rewatched that a while ago, and like we've been having our kids watch all of them for the yeah. first time, and that's like even though I have boys, like they'll sit down and watch Pocahontas or yeah, uh, Mermaid or anything like that. Like if it's a Disney movie, there. They're I, in. Yeah, because we just, we, I, Pocahontas, I watched like two days ago and I was like, it, it was never my favorite one, but the music in Pocahontas is amazing. I loved Pocahontas. I mean, I think that's because I was always a little bit of a history nerd and granted, it's not uh, particularly historically accurate, but whatever. No, no. Uh, but I have the CD, the soundtrack CD. Yeah. And I have to, like listen to it. Yeah. Uh, my music. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say Disney. I mean, I feel like we're, even though we are uh, not the same age, we uh, were in a childhood that was made up primarily of Disney animated. Yes, because there was one every summer in there. Like the big animated feature film was going to come out. And there wasn't, a, I feel like there wasn't a lot of movies made specifically for kids aside from that. There was the American Tale movies. Was that not Disney? No. I don't oh. think it was. I think those were, because like I think All Dogs Go to Heaven, 
which was like horrific actually in hindsight. I refused to watch that movie. I have from childhood I have refused to watch that movie. I I saw it in theaters. So I saw but see my mom used to make the grave mistake of cuz I loved dogs, right? Um and so she was like, "Well, we'll go see these dog movies." And I was like, it always ended badly. Oh, and I was like, I learned very early, actually, that as a dog lover, you don't want to read dog no. books or watch dog movies. Like, you just don't want to do it. The most destroyed by a movie I have ever been is the movie, is it Homeward Bound? Yes! Oh, my God. <laughs> I have a vivid memory. I didn't see it in theaters. My cousin, I don't know if we rented it or if she had owned it and brought it over and we had a sleepover. And I, would, I vividly remember being the lone person who stayed awake through the whole thing, sobbing while everyone else was asleep around me. Shadow! And being like, this is the worst movie of all time, and I hate everyone involved in the making of it. I just made my kids watch that, right? And yeah. same thing. It was the first movie my kids cried. Well, no. My daughter cries in every movie. She's like, she's bizarre. She's like, because I never cried watching movies until I was a little older, and then now I'm a big movie crier. Like, I'm terrible. I'm always been a movie crier. I wasn't until I was maybe 12. And oh. that was like when I grew empathy for like other human beings in the world. Um, but my daughter has been like a movie crier since she was like five. Um, and like will cry for hours after a movie is finished. Like she gets, uh, and she likes it. It's like part of the experience for her. So like Homeward Bound destroyed her, but for sure, like, and he would be not happy if I said this cause he's a teenager. So, but like my oldest son, like, Homeward Bound made him cry. He was not happy with me. For yeah, no, it, that's uh, traumatizing. Yeah, it, that it's one was pretty really traumatizing. Bad. Oh, April says to this day I can't read or watch Marley and Me. No, um, no I refused. Refused absolutely. Anything with a dog, I'm pretty much out. Yeah, me too. At this point, I'm like, no, I already know. It's I've been not, through this enough. Actually, no, I did cry in a movie when I was. Um, I did cry in a movie um, when I was younger because we rented. So I have a vivid memory of like movie rental stores, of course, and not Blockbuster because I've always lived rural. So like we didn't have a Blockbuster. We had Movie Mouse. And I have like vivid, odd memories. Of, it's not a chain or anything. It's just notable that it was called that because I think it's funny. Um, you know, you get your like three movies for three days for three bucks. Not new releases, though. No, um, no. And so I, could, I was never allowed to like get a new release. I had to go get like janky stuff and um I have vivid memories of the posters that were like on the wall when you would walk into the store like for all the movies and um so it's really funny now like on some of the streaming things because the covers for the movies will be like the old posters and I'll be like why do I know what that movie is I'm like I think it's because it was on a poster in our movie rental store but um just going and like spending forever looking at movies and um forever. yeah forever and like I rented this movie called Little Rascals. I watched a lot of like straight to VHS like kids movies that we would get from the movie store or not Little Rascals. It was Little oh, Heroes. That's, a, that's, a, that's Little Rascals is different, but no, yeah. Little Heroes. And it literally is about this dog who like saves this man's life and then he puts out poison to kill a fox and the dog eats it and dies. And I went and like held on to my dog and sobbed for like two hours after the movie ended. I was like six. I was like... Oh, wow. No. Messed up. Messed up. <laughs> Everybody's talking about now the dead dog movies. They're horrible. Why do they do that? No. I don't get it. No. I um I remember in seventh grade, so I've never seen the movie Old Yeller, but in seventh grade we had to read it in school. Yeah. And like we actually were supposed to sit there and read it like a chapter like in class. And I was like, obviously, at seventh, seventh grade, I knew what happened at the end of Old Yeller. So I like read to a certain point and then just pretended to read the end. I'm like, I will fail. I don't care. I do not want to read the end of this book. So no, I just never read it. No. Um, yeah, I watched, um, I'm tr like, movies were like a really big deal growing up. And like, I just remember like family movie night and like, you know, and so we would like eat in the living room and watch a movie, a VHS and all that. Like yeah, movies yeah. were such a big deal, like going to them. And I, and I don't know if that's like, I mean, that's probably just like everybody, but it's like going out to movies was a big deal. Like I still live a half hour from the movie theater and like growing up we did. So that was like a big, like you'd go to the movies and it was a big thing. And we didn't go to very many, um, but yeah, the Disney features always. And then we would, like I said, rent a lot of movies. And I remember like 
now I'm like having flashbacks to so many movies because that's just something that we all that we enjoyed as a family. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have any like video games or anything like that either. Mm-hmm. So like, that's what we would do on a weekend is rent movies for the kids to watch. Um, and I remember the ones that always made me mad were the ones my mom insisted we rent. And I would be like, this looks stupid. And I want nothing to do with it. And she would make us rent it and she would make us watch it. And I would end up loving it like every single time. <laughs> like Bed Knobs and Broomsticks um, was one I absolutely loved, which we tried to rewatch that lately. And it, I don't understand anything about why I liked it because it was oh, just, how funny. I've never seen that one. Um, uh, it was it's like Mary Poppins, but um, not as good apparently on second rewatch. Oh, um, bummer! I hate that. And then Willow was the other one she made us rent, and I was like, this looks like the stupidest movie, and I love it. And we watched it, and I still love it. That is fantastic. Movie. I think I I was sad because I tried to watch Willow, and this is actually like the second time I've tried to watch Willow, and I can't get through it. And I'm like, I think yeah. it's. I just, I genuinely think it's because, like, I didn't watch it when I was a kid. I have never, granted, I have never made it to where Val Kilmer shows up. Oh, well, there's no point if there's no Val Kilmer. I mean, that is, that is half of the reason you, well, like, three-fourths of the reason you watch Willow. Okay, I, like, well, didn't even remember that there was so much without him in it. because So much. I tried to watch it right when we got to the get, But you don't have to get to the Val Kilmer part, Okay, maybe Val I'll... Kilmer, is an essential romance hero. Okay, I'll start it like from the forty-five minutes I was in that still yeah. had no Val Kilmer, um, yeah. and I'll I'll try again. I feel like if you know, it's funny though what things like are formative because I'm thinking about like I think the first movie I actually the first like three movies that we had like movies that we owned when I was really really little and we got like a VCR um, was Lady and the Tramp, Cinderella, and um, The Land Before Time. Um, And those were, like, I watched them over and over and over and over again. So even now, like, I have now rewatched, in the last week, I watched the live version of Lady and the Tramp, which I liked, um, and then the cartoon. And I was like, this movie has, like, no plot and I believe is actually scandalous. And I have Googled this to confirm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, Lady and the Tramp scandal, you guys. And... By the way, I told my mom this when she came over the other day. And I was like, so um, my mom and I basically live in the same place. So we are social distancing. I feel like I have to like throw that out there. Like my mom is. Anyway. Um, so the. Um, so I was like, I I knew like what Jock and Trusty like proposed to Lady at some point in the movie. And I and I never thought much about it because I was a kid. I was like, I don't understand why they have like why are they proposing to her? I've never thought this through, even in all the times I've had it on the in the background while my kids watched it, because that was one of the few that I actually had already bought on DVD and like shown my kids. Um, and this time I was like, "Wait, why are they proposing to her? That is very odd." Like I was like, "Is she? Is this a Regency romance? Is she ruined by her time spent in the pound? Like what? Like I assumed." That's, yeah, so I was like, okay, and then, but girl. then when we got to the end of the movie and they had the puppies already at Christmas, I was like, how long has it been? And then I realized Trusty was still in a cast from getting hit. So I was like, that's like four to six weeks max. If he's still in a cast and they've had puppies and granted dogs don't gestate for long, I was like, this is like a, she was in trouble. <laughs> and I Googled that and the internet confirmed my theory so now I'm like, I'm shook. I was like, that is pretty scandalous, Disney. Huh. Yeah. Um, but the rat from Lady and the Tramp was one of my early recurring nightmares. I used to have oh, nightmares yeah, about perfect. rats. To this and, day. Yeah, and as an adult, I'm like, was I to believe that a rat was credibly going to eat the baby? Because as a child, I 100% thought that. I mean, as an adult, I still feel, I mean, maybe if you, you know, you've had babies, but like that is still legitimately a terrifying scene. I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, I was, uh, in, like, I, I had like, if anybody was looking at my Instagram stories, I obviously had some issues with the way the live action film was rearranged. Cause I was like, what about the rat peril? Cause the terror of the rat is such an intro. Like that is a deeply ingrained childhood memory for me that yeah. that was the most terrifying thing I'd ever seen in my life. Um, so that movie was like very, that was very formative of phobias. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, mostly phobias (laughs) like that gave me a serious, 
Um, and then like one of the other really early movies that I saw, my aunt gave me two like videotapes and one of them had Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella um, from the fifties and or sixties maybe. And the other one had mm -hmm. seven brides for seven brothers. And so those were two of my favorite musicals and I can still sing all the music from both, but obviously seven brides for seven brothers became my like absolute favorite, which leads me to, cause I'm going to ask you about your favorite musical. Cause I have a theory that as a romance writer, your favorite musical informs what you end up writing. And I feel the seven Oregon mountain men who kidnap their wives, like kidnap their prospective brides and bring them up to their cabin is basically why I write both presents and Western romance explained in one. And it's also set in Oregon. Um, so I feel like that movie explains me better than anything else ever could. And the fact that I was obsessed with it at seven and was like, where's the mountain man to come kidnap me? <laughs> um, and I think it just, it just explains a whole lot about me. I just think it's like, does every girl go through their Rodgers and Hammerstein musical phase? Because I don't know why. I have vivid memories. I had the cassette, like, or the VHS of Oklahoma. I have no idea why. My mom says she hates the musical. I don't know who gave it to me or how I got it. Like, we owned it. And I would watch it, like, every day. I was, so, I can remember the house we lived in so I know I was like in elementary school but I don't remember exactly how old I was um but Oklahoma was my absolute favorite um which you know it's like cowboy farm girl it makes sense it um, does. but I yeah I just watched it over and over we tried to do the the dances I absolutely so I can play some of the songs on the piano which is like the few, one of the few <laughs> things I remember about my like year playing the piano um but yeah, I loved Oklahoma. And then because, so in the movie of Oklahoma, it's Gordon McRae and Shirley Jones as the main character. So because of that, I can't remember if I bought Carousel or just like rented it. Um, but I watched that one a lot too. And that one is dark. I don't know why I watched it a lot, except I really liked them. And I don't know. I love Rogers and Hammerstein, though. I love all, yes. almost all of their musicals. I'm not a big fan. I've never gotten through Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, though. That makes me very sad. I just never could. I love it so much. I love the, like, she's so, like, I, and I love, because I love, like, he, well, I mean, he's such a, he's kind of such a presents hero, actually. Like, yeah. funnily enough, he's such a, Adam is such a perfect marriage of, like, the cowboy hero and the presents hero um, because he like rolls into town and is like, I'm like, you're obviously going to marry me and like come up to my cabin. And she's kind of like, Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it like never occurs to him. that She'll say no. And then she throws him out of the bed on their wedding night, like into the tree. Um, and then, which is another thing I like didn't get when I was watching it when I was seven. Cause then like she tells him to come to bed and he like comes through the window and breaks the bed and his brothers are all downstairs and they're like, and I was like, why? <laughs> why, though? <laughs> I, don't understand. I don't understand. And then, like, they had to have the shotgun wedding at the end because they all said the baby was theirs. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so that they wouldn't get, like, because the dads were going to come up and shoot them all. Um, but the married couple actually had a baby. And, um, you know, they're like, whose baby is it? And they all go, mine. <laughs> so that they have to be able to marry the guys and they can't shoot them best <laughs> um and i love nothing more than to like sing about being a lonesome pole cat again i think it explains my aesthetic fairly perfectly <laughs> yeah um but all and like axe dancing dancing with axes and um mm, I'm but i i did love the my favorite part i think of the rogers and hammerstein cinderella is the in my own little corner, in my own little chair song. Oh, I love that song. So okay. I had never seen that, but when I was in middle school, I was in some theater stuff, and we did that version of Cinderella, I want to say. Or maybe we just watched it at, like, a cast party or something. Um, but that was another, I could play the pumpkin song on mm -hmm. the piano. That was, like, so my, p my entire piano repertoire was Josie. That feels on brand. Yeah. Somehow I didn't know you played the piano. I only, I had lessons for a year. Um, and then, so I like didn't learn show tunes that way. I, that, those were just the songs I taught myself. 
but I yeah I didn't play after that I mean I I can play but I never took lessons after that so I'm not a good piano player <laughs> I took lessons for a very long time and I'm it's been so long I am not a good piano player anymore um but uh the uh I was going to say something about the musicals. Oh, because we were blessed with the Brandy version of Cinderella. Yes. Ye old 90s. What was that, like 96, 97? Which I, I found on YouTube, and I rewatched it, and it's still amazing. Um, I mean, yeah. It's got a great, weird cast. So but... weird and so fantastic. And I don't know. I don't. I never saw that prince in anything before or since, but he was magnificent. Yeah. Um, he had a fantastic voice. Um, and... Um, Ha, Tracy's talking about yes Tracy that's the one the Leslie Ann Warren and I like only vaguely remember because I think my mom had mentioned the actress but I've seen it like a hundred times I just wasn't paying attention to like people's names um but yeah I love both I love both versions so much I thought that Brandy one was a gift Whitney Houston's in it so it's like yeah. I mean it's amazing um and uh there were some good like tv movies at that time too this was all pre Netflix. Well, yeah. Pre the stream. Pre stream, watching things with commercials, but Disney didn't have commercials, so. Could watch I never had. Uninterrupted. Um, so, what were your, like, I feel like the teen movie is such a thing. Like, what were your, like, teen movie obsessions? And it doesn't have to be, like, a teen movie, but, like, right. what, your teenage movie obsessions. So, to show how amazing and cool I am. I remember when I was in eighth or ninth grade. I might have been in ninth grade. I might have been in tenth grade. I don't know. Um, I had a stretch of a couple months where I would come home from school every day and watch the uh, animated Anastasia. I loved that movie. Loved it. And I would just watch it every day. Just every single day. Um, I still love that movie. I think it's I love that movie. Um, I was... 11 or 12 when it came out and we had to do a, um, a, like a big almost year long project that year at school on a historical figure where we had to like give a speech as them and have people guess who we were and I was Anastasia because I was so obsessed with that movie but then I had to learn about the real story which did not have Dimitri in it yeah that's the mean it's just boring yeah and sad, sad. yeah <laughs> not really enough for I was reading about like I was like, again, 11 or 12. And I was reading about like Rasputin and his like orgies around campfires. And I was like, why history is weird. Um, so right? <laughs> I, I got a bunch of adult books about it. Cause I was like reading yeah. about the, not a lot of kid books about the real story of the execution of the Russian Royal family. Weirdly. <laughs> That's the one I remember though. I don't really remember. That's like, that was like my, my early teen obsession. Um, I love 10 Things I Hate About You, but I don't remember when that came out. I, I don't know how old I was, but that was like a teen movie sometime in my teens. Yeah. That I absolutely I, adored. I hated She's All That, which was I did like, too. I hated it so much. Hate Still it. hate it. Um, but I liked Drive Me Crazy, which I feel, and 10 Things I Hate About You, which both also have the makeover trope, but they're making over the guy. Yeah, I I'm not a big I, I never really liked the makeover thing. Yeah, I didn't like Drive Me Crazy. But I didn't like that guy. Yeah, I don't I didn't love him, but you know what? It was a book. Um and it was kind of a friends to lovers and I had read it. Um it, it was like a mass market teen book. Um before oh, okay. it was a movie. Um and I read it and um I liked it because they were like friends that then weren't like that's what I liked about it. And I did like Melissa Joan Hart because I love Sabrina, the teenage witch. Um, that was my favorite TGIF show. So, um, I liked it for that reason, but yeah, no, I didn't like him very much. So that was like disappointing. You know what movie I loved was ever after. I never really liked that one either. Oh, I loved but that it. Was very popular. I think I, I, yeah, I loved that one. Like that was, I think though, one of the first like romances, like I, obviously I was watching romantic movies cause seven brides for seven brothers is a romance, but I think that was one of the first like more serious romance movies that I was like, didn't have singing or dancing. And I was like swooning a little bit. Right. Where I was like kind of getting into that instead of being like, I'm going to cover my eyes when they kiss that I was kind of like, Ooh, um, I like this. <laughs> um, and cause I, I actually think I was like kind of young when that came out. 
Um, I don't even remember when it came out. I don't out. remember when it came out. I just remember like having to ask my mom if I could watch it. I had one of the, <laughs> my mom took um, me and my sister and my cousin to see a movie called How to Make an American Quote, which has Winona Ryder in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who, anybody else. I think some of the older ladies were like famous actresses, but I can't think of them at the same time. But anyway, it was like, I think it might've been rated R. Or maybe it was PG-13. And my mom was like, she didn't understand why. Cause it's called how to make an American quilt. It was about these old ladies, and their granddaughters. And then of course there's like, um, they're like all smoking pot all the time. And there was some other like, you know, just like inappropriate things. And my mom was so horrified that she had taken us to see it. But I loved it. It was actually really good. Um, if you can overlook some of the uh, things, but um, but that was one I still like. She, to this day, she's like, I can't believe I took you guys. To <laughs> my grandma we were much too young for that sort of thing. My grandma took my brother and I to see a very Brady sequel. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was like nine, <laughs> and that. It's such an obscure movie. I don't know if anyone other than you and me and my one other, like two, I had two friends that liked it too. I think we're the only four people in the world that have seen it, much less seen it multiple times. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the weird things that I discovered about you that I, that like we just have in common. That's weird. Cause I was like, I have never met another human being other than the people I literally grew up with and was watching with it at, like at the time <laughs> who've watched it enough times to like quote it. Oh yeah. That was a good one. I mean, that funny is that, so Brady Bunch used to be on uh, Nick at Night, or yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I watched, like, the actual Brady so Bunch. Did I. And, like, a movie came out about the Brady Bunch. It was like, oh, yeah. But that was actually the first CD I ever owned, was the soundtrack to the first Brady Bunch movie. That's hilarious. I was, um, very, was, like, yeah. I was yeah. super into 70s stuff, too, like, at the time. And so everything in it looked cool to me. And, like, the... Um, and, you know, I still am like, his name is George, George Tropicana. <laughs> sure, Jan. <laughs> it still makes me laugh. I actually rewatched it because it's on Hulu. And it still makes oh, me like, I still think it's so funny. It's just, it, you know, I love a good, dumb comedy. Yeah. Like just, it's not like crude. It's not, it's just like kind of stupid, but it's just yes. so stupid it makes you laugh. Yeah. Like Napoleon Dynamite. For I like example. Napoleon Dynamite. It's hilarious. It's nonsense, but it yeah, um, it's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, I think um, I'm gonna read some of the other people's favorite movies just really quick while I think of my my next ones. Scrolling up, guys. Um, oh, Stephanie says I couldn't sleep with my closet shut for like two years because of ET. Oh, I never liked ET. Yet. I didn't either. I was just <laughs> saying that to my husband. I was like. I, cause we were watching a bunch of Owl Kitty videos. Cause if you haven't seen like that little Owl Kitty is really cute. They make little clips and they put the cat into the movie. Like I was just watching the Witcher, if the Witcher had a black cat and if Owl Kitty was baby Yoda and there was a little ET one and it was actually really funny, um, with Owl Kitty as, um, ET. And I was like, that makes me wish that I liked ET and had seen it like more than once, but I just hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Um, and Oh, um, April says, uh, Leslie Ann Warren was in the movie Pure Country starring George Strait. Pure Country is my favorite movie. I've never seen that movie. I haven't either. Um, Sound of Music. Linda says Sound of Music is my favorite musical. I love Sound of Music. And now that I'm older, I appreciate the beauty of, uh, Captain Von Trapp. Yes. That took some, some, some seasoning, but yeah. Yeah. I had to, I had to be seasoned <laughs> a little bit. Now I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> All right, that I'm going to admit something weird here, right? Because I actually love the movie Galaxy Quest. Um, but I quite like Tim Allen because I grew up watching Home Improvement. So I but he was always a movie dad, you know, like a TV dad. Um, we rewatched Galaxy Quest and I was like, oh, no, I'm old enough that I think Tim Allen is hot now. The movie's 20 years old, in fairness to me. So this is like 20 years ago, Tim Allen catching up with me. I I thought he was hot in that movie. Linda says Far and Away by, uh, for Tom Cruise is one of the best romantic movies I've watched. And I've never seen that either. I think I have seen that. I do think I liked that. But I don't, I've only seen it once. It was a million years ago. But and, I do think I like that one. And Penny says Dirty Dancing, which I've also never seen. 
you never seen Dirty Dancing? No, I've never seen Dirty Dancing. I, I remember vividly seeing Dirty Dancing for the first time because I was like in first or second grade, which is completely inappropriate. And our neighbors owned it. And like I would go over and play with their daughter, who was even younger than me. And we watched it in the basement. And I was like, I didn't understand half of what was going on. Um, it's funny because I think I very, I think my biggest gap in movies is the 80s because yeah. they were not movies that were nostalgic for my mom. So, and I was too young for them. So like, there's like 16 Candles, which Linda also mentioned. I haven't seen that. Um, I did watch Pretty in Pink and I did not like it. I was in, I did try to watch that when I was a teenager. Cause my friend, I had a friend who really liked, um, a lot of those movies. She liked, um, 16 Candles and she liked, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And I mm -hmm. hated both of them. Yeah. I, the only, uh, John Hughes movie that I actually really like is Breakfast Club. I, I remember watching that on like TV when I was probably a teenager at my grandma's house. Yeah. Um, and I really liked that, but the rest of them, uh, they just don't, I feel like it's a specific era that you kind of had to be. Yeah. So to enjoy it. my first experience with absolute, I touched on this a little bit in our TV episode. My very first experience with like absolute like fanishness was Lord of the Rings. And so that yeah, first like, one, like... My husband just watched that today. Really? Like, rich, like, my husband finally wore them down and they agreed to watch the first one. Did they so. like it? I feel like at their age, it might be boring. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they sat there and watched it. I, I don't think that my oldest was like, can we not watch the second one? I, so I, my kids have seen the first one, but we broke it up into like three sittings yeah they sat there for this, i don't think they finished it but yeah the first one is it. the first one is slow but i yeah, remember it was, it was very clearly i don't like i don't know it was one of those things where it's like i i love like i've never been captivated like that my parents wanted me to go see um yes sure and i agree uh ever she's just uh, ever after with drew barrymore and doug ray scott and i'm getting um I'm getting crap for having never seen Dirty Dancing, which now apparently I have to watch. But, um, no, I was, um, uh, my parents were like, we're going to go see Lord of the Rings. And I was like, isn't it like three hours long? I don't think I want to see that. And I was like 14. So I was like, ugh. Um, and we went and I was just like riveted to the screen the entire time. I'd never particularly liked fantasy. I had never, I didn't consider myself a fan of anything like that. I think Harry Potter had come out. I wasn't interested in it at all. Like, I wasn't interested in wizards and all that kind of stuff. Didn't, like, I didn't read or watch Harry Potter until I was quite a bit older. I was probably an adult, a young adult, like 18. But that was, so I was way late on that um, and just wasn't interested. And so I just, to this day, don't understand, like, why that movie right then hit me. But then that was, like, my entire teenage experience. Because it was, like, all, because they came out once a year. So maybe I was 15 because it was like 15, 16 and 17 that they were coming out. And like that was my whole teenage experience then became just being obsessed with that. And that was the, and I had a group of friends that were really obsessed with it, too. And so and we, we were like on the news because we dressed up um, to go and we were homeschooled so we could go to like the opening day. Like this was before they did midnight showings. We went to the two towers, the morning showing first day. We didn't have school. So I mean, where we could like blow it off. So it didn't you know, matter because we were doing it at our kitchen tables. So we all went dressed like elves and we were on the news and then um, we went to the midnight showing of Return of the King, like just, um, and did a drum circle. <laughs> I didn't do anything like that for any movie. Oh, um. weird. I, that's so strange. <laughs> I am just shocked. Uh, I don't think I got obsessed with, I didn't, TV was definitely more of a thing for me than, like, I mean, I love movies. I would rewatch movies. I did get in high school. I wanted to, or no, maybe I was in college. I wanted to do the AFI's hundred top movies. Mm -hmm. um, so I love, I love classic movies. Like I, my favorite movie of all time is probably it's a wonderful life, which is partly because it's a Christmas movie, but um, I love Jimmy Stewart. I've watched like most of Jimmy Stewart movies. Um, I always liked those. My mom would like be so irritated. She's like, Oh, you're watching other black and white movies. Um, she was not a fan. Um, but I loved it. I loved Gone with the Wind. Um, that was one I remember, like, I can vividly remember watching for the first time. 
Um, but I was never like obsessed with a movie. I mean, I loved Anastasia. Oh, that was probably the closest I came. Yeah. Watching it. For a while. Well, I was also, I mean, I would be remiss to not mention that this is obviously my favorite Disney cartoon, um, which is another formative. I write Beauty and the Beast stories over and over again. If you read any of my presents, I'm sorry. You've read my take on this about 50 times. <laughs> um, but I have never, and I remember very clearly being, I think I was seven when it came out. I remember very clearly not understanding quite why I was let down by his transformation from Beast to Prince. I get it now. Yeah. I'm like, it's kind of like taking Jason Momoa and making him like Chris Pine, which it's like, that's fine, but that's not the same. <laughs> that's a really good, uh, that's a really apt <laughs> comparison. Look, Chris Pine has his place. It's fine. It's fine. It's, his, yeah. his eyes are pretty. One or the other. Yeah. But you, you can't trade out one for the other. That's the problem. It's like, if you want, if you're in a Jason Momoa space, you're not you're not wanting him to become Chris Pine. That's all I'm saying. It's no offense to Chris Pine. Oh. Who I quite liked in Wonder Woman. But what I think is really funny is that we went and saw so my husband is a Trekkie. Like big time. He's he's such a nerd. Um and he he's really into Star Trek. And so we went and saw the Star Trek movies which when they came out, which actually I did like the first Star Trek movie quite a bit. That's like my Star Trek tolerance like right there. Um, but, um, what I think is really funny is that was like Chris Hemsworth's first mainstream movie. He played Chris Pine's dad. I, I know. know. That's weird. And no, cause I vividly remember being like, but his dad was hotter. <laughs> and didn't know who he was. He was on screen for like five minutes and got killed in the first five minutes of the movie. Cause they saved Chris Pine, who was Captain Kirk. Um, and I, but I remember being like, but why? The other one. Oh, Stephanie says Jason is from Iowa. One of the few things we have. Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> That's true. Ashton Kutcher is also no Jason Momoa, though I do like him. True. Um. But uh, no, I like Ashton. I do. He was in a lot of movies I liked. At, I did not like Dude Where's My Car, but I did like. I loved him in that um, Cheaper by the Dozen movie. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's really cute. It's on, I think it's on Disney Plus. I remember seeing out. He, he, he plays the most ridiculous character in it. And I just loved it. It was so self-deprecating because he plays a guy that wants to be an actor. And he's like the boyfriend that they hate that they're trying to like sabotage the sister's relationship. And I just, I think he's great in it. It's really cute. Um, I think Steve Martin and Bonnie Hunter in it. No, it's probably why I've never seen it. Do you not like Steve Martin? I do not like Steve Martin. I hate Martin Short, which is controversial. I also hate Martin Short. <laughs> huh? I also hate Martin Short. That's fair. I like Steve Martin, though. I do not. I, I hate Chevy Chase and Martin Short. I also hate Chevy Chase. I Pretty much that whole, like, milieu uh, is not for me. I, what's really funny is, like, I actually did like The Three Amigos okay, and I shouldn't have. But my, my husband likes Martin Short a lot, and we have a lot of strife about that because I'm. But okay, worst move like one of the worst movies I've ever seen is Clifford with Martin <laughs> Short. And that is an obscure movie. I feel like no one saw that. It sounds vaguely familiar, but he plays I like a kid in it, which actually I also have a phobia of adults playing kids. I can't watch Big with Tom Hanks. I can't do it. It freaks me out. <laughs> It's weird, and I don't like it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that got me. I don't know why. That's funny. Have I never told you that before? No. I no. it the Just the trailer to Big freaks me out. <laughs> I can't stand it. There... I don't like it at all. And so Martin Short plays a 10 year old child in Clifford and it is so scary and weird. And I hate it. Like it. <laughs> and he, but he's like an evil child and he's trying to like sabotage the dad from Beethoven's life. And hasn't he been through enough with that St. Bernard? I don't like him either. Okay. 
it's I don't like it. And <laughs> I hate I hate Martin Short forever because of that movie. <laughs> oh man. I can, I can never oh, unsee it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Have you seen Big? I haven't seen it. It's, like, big. it's not my favorite. Oh. I, I mean I actually I understand a little bit where you're coming from. I think it's a little uncomfortable to watch someone, an adult person, sort of like have to like pretend to be a child. Like I get that discomfort. <laughs> Oh, I call it scary. <laughs> there, this is, okay. Do you remember Rugrats, the cartoon? Yes. There's an episode of Rugrats where the dad falls off the roof and thinks he's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it scares me. Because he's supposed to be taking care of the children. <laughs> So there you have, I guess I'm weird. I don't know. No. But it is. It's uncomfortable. It's, emba it's embarrassing, I think. Like, it's that secondhand embarrassment. That, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, and I'm like, no. <sighs> yeah. No, don't like it. Don't like it at yeah. all. So that um, that is one of the worst movies I've ever seen that, like, lingers with me as a terrible movie that, like, Cause I'll watch a lot of things and like, unless they're really sad, like movies with sad endings will like make me mad and I won't like that. But, um, not a lot of movies that I'm like, wow, that was dumb. And I'm mad that I saw it, but that is one of them. Yeah. Um, when my husband and I first started dating, we both still lived at home. So like the only thing we could do was go out. And, um, so we saw like, so that would have been 2004. So from 2004 to about 2004, Five, we saw like every single movie in theaters yeah um, and the two that stick out to me and I don't even remember anything about them at this point because that was you know 15 years ago but I remember being so angry and like talking about how they were the worst movies I've ever seen the first one was a movie called paparazzi or the paparazzi and I don't remember anything about it except I can picture the actor who was in it and it was just horrendous I mean like not even memorable just horrendous Huh. And then a movie with Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah that had something to do with like the taxi driver or the taxi, and it was not funny. At I all. I don't even remember those movies existing. There's a reason they are yeah. the worst movies because of that era. Here's era. another here's another fun fact about things Nicole and I found out we have in common. We did we started dating our now husbands in the same year. So I think we were like going out to a lot of movies at the time too. So I definitely watched a lot of movies right in that. Um, Cause yeah, I've been with, with him for 16 years. So yeah, same. Um, so yeah, that's a, uh, that's funny, but I don't remember those at all. Cause that was definitely the era where I was like watching a lot of movies cause no kids and we were dating and there was nothing. I lived at home. So there was nothing else for us to do. Um, and so yeah, a lot of movies and, um, we, we like went through this phase where we were like when we were dating and when we were first married where we were trying to watch like scary movies and like I don't like them. I'm mad. I am mad that I saw those, but I wouldn't say they were bad movies because I feel like they did what they were supposed to do. It's just that they're not for me. But I did like The Ghost in the Darkness. Isn't that with Guy Pierce? I have, I don't know that one. I will say I am not a big scary movie fan. I remember uh, I had to have been in middle school maybe. Um, and at a sleepover, my friend put on Tommy Knockers, mm -hmm. which is a Stephen King movie uh, or a Stephen King book. But I, I've just seen the movie, and I'm not a big Stephen King fan in any movie, book, whatever. I don't like being scared. I don't like that. Yeah. Thing. Um. So, but Tommy Knockers, I really liked. I mean, it's creepy and it's like got aliens, but like for some reason, like I enjoyed it. It had who was in it? I think Jimmy Smith. I don't know if you remember who that is, but um, uh -huh. he was in Law and Order. Uh -huh. Um. But um, I remember liking that movie, even though it was scary. But well, usually I just avoid scary movies. Ghost in the Darkness was about um, the man-eaters of Savo, which I had read about because my grandpa had all these old nature books. And there was a whole write-up on man-eating lions, which I had read because I'm a weirdo. And um, so it's basically about man-eating lions. And it so it's, it wasn't paranormal. So I liked it because it was like, like, I liked Jurassic Park. Apparently, I like animals eating people if I'm going to go creepy. I did not like Jurassic Park. That was too scary. I liked it, and I watched it probably way too young, but I did like dinosaurs a lot. That was a thing that I liked. Um, 
getting a phone call, but I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> um, cause all my kids are here. So yeah, everything's I know I'm like, there's no, whatever it is, like, it's not, it's, there's nothing perilous. Like if it, if my kids are at school, then I have to answer the phone. Cause I'm like, I don't know who that is. Um, but yeah. Um, I, the, I did watch Sixth Sense and like it. And I feel like always, like, typically I can't do, like, movies like that will scare me for a long time afterwards. So I don't like to watch them because I'm really easily disturbed. Um, but I thought the story in that one was done so well. And then we tried to watch, like, the M. Night Shyamalan movies that came out after that. And really, he only had one good movie. <laughs> no, I watched one I didn't mind. And I'm trying to think. I feel like Ron Howard's daughter was in it. The oh, village. yeah. No, no, no. The Village. And do you know why I didn't like that one? I guess the twist five minutes before it started. Like, five minutes into the movie. I don't mind that because then I'm not as scared. I think the reason that it bothered me was that I had read a YA book um, that was almost exactly that plot. And I was like, I feel... And it was old. It was an old... Um, it was an old book. So I was like, I feel like you ripped off this book. Um, and so I figured it out really early in because it was about this girl escaping from like finding out that she didn't live in the 1800s and that she really lived in the, in the nineties or whatever. It was like early nineties. Um, and so that, um, I felt like that bothered me cause it was like derivative of this book that I had really, really liked. And it wasn't like credited as being the source material. So I was like, I feel a little bit like you ripped that off. I remember this, I think it was a TV movie or maybe I just saw it on TV. And it had Sila Ward in it, who, which I only remember because I love the show Sisters. Um, I can't remember the guy in it. And it had a terrible ending, but it was kind of, um, I don't know, I just like it sticks with me. It was like the ghost and misses somebody or right. I don't remember what it's called. But, um, and I like barely remember anything about it except the ending was like so shocking. And it's a bad ending, but it was so shocking. Like it stuck with me in not a bad way. Like I wasn't mad about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> It might have been a TV movie. I can't remember. I did like Signs. That was at M. Night Shyamalan with Aliens and Mel Gibson. And also Joaquin Phoenix. Huh. Who was in um, The Village. Yeah. Um, before he was kind of a whole thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I did like those two. And then, like, I watched The Village and I think I never watched another Oh, we, cause we watched Unbreakable, which was like terrible. My husband likes that movie. So in fairness, like, but he, we, we have now learned that there are certain things that like he can watch and I'll sit in the same room with like headphones on and like do something else. <laughs> so it's together yeah. time. And I, that's what I do. He loves, cause he loves Star Trek. Like I said, so he's watching Picard. Like we got CBS all access just so he could watch Picard. And then he like binge watch Discovery cause they had that on there. And I'm like, I just don't. Connect. I just can't pretend to care about. I watched a little bit of um, the one where uh, the one with Patrick Stewart, and I don't know which one it is. Next Generation, <clears throat> I guess. I that's the only one that I like could mild like that. I watched a few episodes of actually, um, and liked okay, but I still like don't like it enough to follow it. I guess like sci fi is not really my thing. Yeah. Um, I like. Star Wars because they cause they re-released the Star Wars movies in theaters when I was like 11 <coughs> and so we re-watched um we my brother and I watched Star Wars for the first time in theaters um before they released episodes one two and three and my brother got that was his like fan attachment and so I grew up with uh, my brother being absolutely 100% obsessed with Star Wars. And I will say, I do think that was one of my very first real serious crushes on like a grown man was on Harrison Ford. I mean, so to dust or to move on, like I remember watching Indiana Jones on TV and being like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm here for this. Yeah. I don't really know. I like, I wouldn't have had, I don't know how old I was. I don't know what what word I would have used, but it was like, yeah, that this this works for me. I love. I actually had, I did have a little Harrison Ford obsession and started watching like any movie that had him in it. Like we would rent that up. if I saw him in it, I would rent it at Blockbuster. Um, which yeah. uh, Sabrina, his version of Sabrina with Greg Kinnear and Juliette Binoche, I think. 
I don't know, Julia Ormond. I don't know, one of those two. Um, I loved that. I actually like that one better than the original, but that's, I just think because Harrison Ford is better looking than Humphrey Bogart. Um, True. Just, and then there was a movie called Regarding Henry, where I think he was like, I think he got amnesia. Yeah. Like, he's a terrible person, and then got amnesia and was a lovely person, like that whole 90s trope. Um, but if Harrison Ford was in a movie for a while there, I would rent it and watch it. Although I don't think I've ever seen The Fugitive. Oh, I love The Fugitive. You should watch it. That's actually really great. Um, cause it's also got Tommy Lee Jones who I like being grumpy in anything. So, um, yeah, I, I actually, I want to rewatch The Fugitive now. Um, no, I, that was really funny because I was like, I was pretty young and, Actually, I did have a little crush on one of the guys, one of the men in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, like very innocently thought he was quite good looking. It was the one that was, a, he was a baseball player. And he was very like baseball player looking. He had like this like very square jaw. He was very tall. Didn't have very many lines because I think he was like not an actor. Um, <laughs> and, but he played Benjamin in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and I loved him. And then regrettably, like his, uh, his matchup, his girl was Dorcas. And I was like, well, so when we played the game, because of course my friends and I played Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, I always had to be Dorcas. But like the, um, which doesn't really work when you're like eight, um, <laughs> Dorcas. Um, but uh, no, I remember like being like, I don't know, he's mean. I, just, I don't like him very much, but I had like a folder with like Han Solo on it. <laughs> And I was like, but she's like, I love you. And he's like, I know. And like, he's so, he's a horrible person, but like, I loved him. And then I saw Indiana Jones after that for the first time and loved Indiana Jones. And one of the things that has always like, one of the things that amazes me about Harrison Ford is that he is so completely Han Solo and Indiana Jones. And I, you don't confuse the two. No. And they're these two major franchise characters. And like what, there are so few actors that can do something like that. Be two like major characters and they're not, the same and they're not like they're they're so distinct to me yeah like for example if i see tom cruise in a movie he's always tom cruise to me like i never forget that he's not like he's just always tom cruise like i don't think of him as any particular character mm -hmm. um but i think part of that too with star wars and indiana jones in particular like it's such a world building thing like it's such a whole world it's not even though indiana jones is just pretty much about indiana jones like they're in this completely yeah. that's world. true like, so i think that helps yeah but i mean i think it's it down to the actor a little bit too, because they have to have that that skill to make you think of them as somebody different <clears throat> yeah yeah and um and he's just really kind of smoking hot as boat true love harrison ford love harrison ford <laughs> yep yeah and then, like, I had, like, you know, bog standard, like, uh, your ye old bog standard teenage crushes. And because I was a young teenager when Lord of the Rings came out, I obviously liked Orlando Bloom and not Viggo Mortensen because Viggo was, like, old enough to be my dad. And um, Orlando Bloom was more in my age range, which I think is funny now. But you're, like, I, I so I have, like, an affectionate place in my heart for Orlando Bloom and always will um, because I did love him a lot. But... I went to see um, Troy um, in theaters because it was Brad Pitt, who I actually never particularly cared for. Um, my husband loves Brad Pitt. I love Brad Pitt. <laughs> I've seen, the movies I love of Brad Pitt, you haven't seen. No, I know. Because we've discussed that, actually. Mm -hmm. How, like, I think my problem with Brad Pitt is that I have never seen... I don't actually know that I've ever seen a Brad Pitt movie all the way through. Except um, Ocean's Eleven. Well, yeah. And I quite, I like him in that. I'm just not like particularly attracted to Brad Pitt. A River Runs Through It is one of my favorite movies, and he is phenomenal in it, although it was a tragic figure, but I love that movie. Um, yeah, so I went, I was so excited because Troy was like the first movie Orlando Bloom was in after Lord of the Rings, and I was like, oh, great, he's going to like be in stuff, and like, I'm going to go see it. And Brad Pitt's in it. Great. And my friends and I went to see it and I sat through like 20 minutes of it and was like, why? This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And I would rather have my $7 movie ticket money back. And I left my friends in the movie and like walked out and got my money back. I have never done that. 
You know what movie I saw multiple times in theaters? This just occurred to me is um, Titanic. I saw that like three or four times in theaters. That surprises me to learn. I wouldn't say that I love that movie. Like, I think it's a good movie. Um, I don't love Leonardo DiCaprio. Particularly. I do like Kate Winslet, but um, I don't, and I don't even remember why. I think it was just, you know, it was such a popular movie. And I think I probably went with like different groups of people every time I went. Mm-hmm. But that is one of the few movies I remember seeing. Actually, <laughs> I just remembered another movie I saw twice on purpose because I saw them at the same theater, which no longer exists, um, was the movie Tom and Huck. Oh, I love that movie. JTT yes. and Brad Renfro. Yes. As Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. I purposely, yes, went and saw that one twice. Oh, Brad Renfro. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we actually um, had the kids watch that. Uh, maybe last week and they were not impressed i loved that movie we we just did a little um uh, like there was a whole jtt thing because there was man of the house which was him and chevy chase i think i don't know i've never seen that probably if it had chevy chase in it though that's probably i why. saw it because i loved i loved jonathan taylor thomas i really did i loved him and um wild america i loved, loved. Wild america. that's devin sawa <laughs> yeah and Brad Renfro, right? Yeah, Brad Renfro again, and JTT, and so I good. That's a good movie. That's a great movie. Um, and I would love to see. I, I want to rewatch that now. Um, and yeah, I have never seen Titanic. I mean, I think it's worth watching once. Yeah, the, the problem is, I want to say that came out in nineteen ninety six. Mm, I feel like it was a little before that because I don't think I was in high school. Um, I could be wrong. I'm gonna Google it. <clears throat> so I remember the only reason I even have a reference point for that is um, is that I remember the Leonardo DiCaprio um, like when he like shot to fame, cause, yeah. like posters and everything. And so it I could be remembering after that movie came out because I no, yeah, yeah, it was see the movie. Oh yeah, ninety seven is when it came out, actually. Yeah. Um, and so I could be, re- yeah. So I remember like people, and then Saving Private Ryan came out at the same time. Um, and the only reason I remember that is that it was like there was a Matt Damon, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, like there were factions, right? Like you either liked Leonardo DiCaprio or you liked, I felt that my, my classroom at the time was divided oh, thus. And I never saw either movie, but I liked Matt Damon. So. I, yeah. I liked Matt Damon too. But I w- I liked, um, the person that I was like in love with at the time was Matthew Lawrence. Oh, that, um, that is so you. <laughs> Isn't it? It's <laughs> just so you. <laughs> I look I liked a floppy haired boy with a bowl cut. I don't know what to <laughs> no. I loved that show. This is TV again. Yeah. But I loved Brotherly Love and I wasn't gonna I didn't mention it on our thing because I was like, I think that had two seasons and no one saw it. Oh, we, we totally watched it. Oh, I loved it so much. And I wouldn't say I loved it, but we watched it. I loved it. I was actually just thinking about it because I was thinking about that show and I was like, that actually had great conflict. My my I, my sister loved that show and loved Matt Lawrence. Oh my gosh, I loved him. Yeah, I, I loved him so much. I don't remember anything about it except watching it. Um, that was that was a really hardcore actor crush. I think that was my like first really hardcore where I like knew I had a crush on this person I did not know and that it was creepy and weird. Like that I was like, oh, I have like feelings for this person I don't know, and that's weird. Because like yeah. the Harrison Ford thing, like all that stuff was like before I knew what a crush felt like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, no, I, and then like he, him, I was like, oh, I like have a crush on him, and that's like, and one of my friends gave me because I wasn't allowed to have like movie star magazines with like pictures of boys in them and stuff. Like I had a friend who had Jonathan Taylor Thomas all over her room, like posters of him. <laughs> my my mother would not have allowed such a thing, um, so I did not have that. But a friend gave me a picture of Matt Lawrence out of like Tiger Beat or whatever, and um, so I had like a picture of him. That was like very dear to my heart because it was like the one thing that I had. Um, and yeah, but I was actually just thinking that show had not terrible conflict because it's like 
he came to like reconnect with his brothers, but like the, and the dad was dead. And like the mom was the other woman basically. That was the reason his dad didn't raise him. I remember nothing about that show except yeah. that there was the three Lawrence brothers. Like yeah. Cause Joe, cause Joey was there, was playing their half brother. Okay. I do okay. remember I did not like him, and every time he sang, I was like a little cringy. He sang. Yeah, I oh, he sang the theme the song. song. Yeah, he sang. I don't God bless him. <laughs> he cried. Um. We <laughs> talk about Emma. Oh yeah, I love <laughs> Emma. Not the new one, although you've seen the new one. I have it, but yes, the Gwyneth have. Paltrow, Jeremy Northam. Emma is one of my I've seen a bazillion times. I memory. love that movie. I think that is my favorite Austin adaptation. It is mine. I mean, yeah. I love Pride and Prejudice. I, lo- I like, I love Pride and Prejudice, and I love Sense and Sensibility. You haven't seen the Colin Firth. One. I have not seen the Colin Firth. One. That's the only Pride and Prejudice I care about. I don't like the Matthew McFadden one. I love him. I don't like that. I love him. Not for me. But. So I love, I like Sense and Sensibility a lot because I love, um, well, I love Alan Rickman a whole lot. Um, don't at me. Um, so I love that. And I love, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot her name. Emma. 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 I keep wanting to say Watson. Thompson. Thompson. (laughs) Love her. Um, so I, I do like that one. Although I, I like Hugh Grant a lot. I like him in many movies. I do not find him attractive. So I like that movie a lot, but I don't find him. So like Emma for me works on that level where like, I find Jeremy Northam very attractive. Like I love the whole, like badly done. Emma is like one of my favorite things (sighs) ever in the whole world. So I did watch the new Emma. I watched it with my mom a few days ago and I was really not that interested in it because I love the Gwyneth Paltrow, Jeremy Northam version. And what I will say I liked, so I also watched the new little women, which I really did like, but one thing I thought was weird about it was how much Saoirse Ronan was kind of just playing Winona Ryder as Joe. I felt like she very much played that the same way. I mean, so, but you haven't had the book. I have not. So I did not, feel that way and I still love the 1994 or whatever it was version but I saw both I liked the new little women they felt very different to me um I thought it overall felt very different I just thought her performance in parts remind like was the same delivered the the lines were delivered much the same and I thought she was good I thought it was is I mean as a character I thought that that was probably the case and that that was a very fair I'm not, I'm not criticizing it because I actually yeah, thought she was no, good. I just yeah. didn't get that because I, I loved that book. I, I read that book quite yeah. a bit as a child and watched the 1990-whatever version quite a bit as a child. Yeah. So I really, um, so I still think I like that one a little bit better because maybe just because of nostalgia, but um, I, um, you know, when you're a kid, like Gabriel Byrne as Professor Bear is a little bit more well. Like, I st- yeah playing him and I, old- I that actually was the thing that bothered me the most about the new one was um so I I poor Christian Bale I don't like him at all no so I really I was not so even though I am obviously like could snap Timothy Chalamet like a twig and like he was a Lori, I think he was a great Lori. I thought he was like really, really great in that role. And I forgave the fact that visually I did not find him a good casting choice because of his performance, which I thought was very, very good. Um, and I just didn't really get the professor bear though at all. Like I really didn't get it. Cause I thought he was so young. I think he was I too have- young. And like, I mean, it, and so I didn't, and I wasn't like so blown away by what he did with it that I forgave it. Yeah. So okay. I was just say Sharon said persuasion, which I saw. I love persuasion is actually my favorite Austin novel. Um, and I have read all of the Austin novels. I had to do a senior project on my English degree. Um, I love persuasion. And so maybe that was why the version, I, movie version I saw, I did not care for. I can't even remember what it was. I was just kind of bored. 
But I think there's a couple versions, and I can't remember what version I saw, so I don't know. Um, well, what I was going to say about the new Emma is what I find so interesting about it is they are not playing them like you could not compare that nightly to Jeremy Northam's nightly. It's very, very different. And they have some of the same lines because they're from the book. Um, and he delivers it. He's a very, very different nightly. I liked him. I don't think that I, I don't think I like him better, but I actually yeah. think because there's not a compare, like, because you can't, because he's not playing Jeremy Northam as nightly, it actually is better. Um, so I liked him a lot. Um, it, it wasn't the same. He's not as like paternal. Yeah. Like he is actually a little angrier with her many times. Like he actually, so in the scene, you know, where, um, where Jeremy Northam says, you know, badly done Emma. And he does, he doesn't yell at her though. He's very stern with her. This nightly yells at her. He's like, you, like you're an awful person. And, but she is a, a less sweet Emma. Well, having read the book, that's one of my least, funny because it's one of my favorite it's probably my favorite austin adaptation movie wise but it's like my least favorite austin yeah book because I, emma is a tool <laughs> well i didn't find her unlikable though yeah movie i just found her young she actually is just a much more like kind of young person who does not understand what she's messing with it's, it's yeah. very convincing as somebody who's just d not so i actually really liked her um i did not like uh, Jane Fairfax or um, uh, Frank Churchill as much as the ones in the 96. Like I would say like very squarely, I was like, if it's not Ewan McGregor, he doesn't make sense. I loved Ewan singing in that movie. Yes. And also Ewan McGregor played Frank Churchill very much as a sassy gay friend, which <laughs> in Clueless is what he was. <laughs> well, he did like, and so I was like, honestly, I think Jane is his beard. And like there, but he, like, she was very pretty. And you're like, you kind of had the impression they're going to marry and it's totally for convenience, but they're both kind of awful people and it's okay. And in the move, like this new movie, he was not as cute. He was just kind of mean. And Jane Fairfax was more of a whole character and she was kind of sympathetic. And so I felt sorry for her. Like, I was yeah. like, oh, that's bad. Like in the, in the 96, in the, in the Gwyneth Paltrow version, I was like, yeah, fair enough. Honestly, yeah. I'm going to swan around and be mean to people and like just be catty forever. And that worked for me. Um, but what I will say is the Harriet in the new one was the best version of that character I've ever seen and made her so much more likable and make so much more sense as like somebody that Emma would take on as a project. And she was still kind of dim, but she was really, she was just, Tony Collette was kind of a drip. Um, and I, I, I loved, like, I thought she was the best part of the movie. I thought she was fantastic. Like she really made that character stand out to me in a way she didn't in the other movie. So I think there's a lot of like reasons to watch the new version. It's really different. I did, I like watching like different versions of the same movie. Like, cause I, I mean, I think that's fun to compare and contrast like that. Yeah. Oh, I also liked, um, is, how do you say Bill Nighy? Oh yeah, I he was so. Mr. Woodhouse in um in this one, and he was great. Very different like interpretation of the character than the other movie, but he was really great. Um, it was it was a really good cast, by and large. Um, and and I really I liked the new Little Women too, but I I kind of feel the same way you do, where it's like it's those things you see first, that kind of, a lot of times end up being the definitive. Well, and I will say the 90, the 90, whatever version is more of a feel good version. Yeah. I think. And it's more, it's the book. It's not mixing up Louisa May Alcott's life in it. Um, like they do at the end of the yeah. new little woman. So I, they're just different, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I just like literally cried the whole second one because it's just, more poignant, I think, but I think the older one's more warm hearted. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, and that was the thing. And I, cause we were talking to, so I think Megan and Jackie are our, our, our friends, Megan and Jackie, you guys who have been on videos with us, you know, um, have never seen or read little women. I know. So they don't know the story at all. And so I went to see the movie and I cried like when certain characters showed up right. on screen <laughs> 
And, and I loved it in part because I was like, I actually just love that I get to see this again in a slightly yeah. different way. Like, so for that reason, I was like, I love that this exists. Um, mm. cause you can go back and watch the other one, but it's like, it's great to have a new version to watch too. Um, and it feels, it felt nostalgic. And, um, so, and I, so I loved it. Um, even though I was just saying like that about Sierra Sharona, like that wasn't a criticism. I genuinely loved the movie. Um, but I was trying to, like, I, I wasn't even sure that I could recommend it to someone who'd never seen it though. Like right. I, don't, I couldn't tell you if it stands on its own. So my sister, my youngest sister had never read the book, never seen any of the versions, allegedly. I don't know how she got through. I mean, she's 10 years younger than me, but, yeah. um, so she went, it was me, my mom and my youngest sister and she liked it. Okay. Um, she was a little bit more, I thought I was like, the way they do it is a little bit more confusing. And yes. I was like, were you confused? And she was like, no. So she, I mean, it stood on its own for her, but I was like, as I watched it, I was like, how would you understand the depth of this without yes. having some background in it? Yes. And that mm -hmm. is how I, you know, when it came to, was I going to recommend it to someone who wasn't familiar with the story? I was like, Oh, I don't know. Cause I mean, I read the book like when I was in fifth grade, like, and that was one of those first books that I, I mean, it's a, it's a long, thick, book and I read the whole thing in a short period of time and I just absolutely the loved terrible it. the terrible thing is that I've never read it and my husband has read it and read Joe's Boys and lectures I'm constantly. Not, uh, actually maybe I did read Joe's Boys. I know I check I have like a vivid memory of checking it out from the library at my school. Yeah. But, um but, it but didn't, my husband grew up without electricity so yeah I mean it happened. So you know he read more classics than me. Also, I was allowed to read more things than him. I don't think he was allowed to read anything that wasn't a classic. So, and he was homeschooled. So he didn't have access to like whatever he wanted. Like I had a whole school library. I could go get what I wanted. So I read, I, I avoided classics when I didn't have to read them. I love them. I know I'm, I'm a really, really bad uh, romance author. Cause I have not read Jane Austen. I, st I still remember when I read Pride and Prejudice. That was the first Jane Austen book I read. I was in high school. I was at my grandma's house. And she did not have cable. So I sat there and I read. I mean, I stayed up till like 3 o'clock in the morning finishing it. I just it's not. funny because I actually think that my problem is I have, um, I have a prejudice against classics because of ones I was made to read when I was a little bit too young to read them. Um, because there are some that I chose of my own free will, like Anne of Green Gables, which mm. is one of my favorite books ever. And I've read it a hundred times and I read it as a kid and I just, I loved it. So it isn't that I don't like them. It's that I was forced to read Swiss Family Robinson and Moby Dick and, um, like a few others that like were, were very dry, um, and that I really didn't want to read. And so anytime something becomes assigned reading for me, it's like, my interest goes way down. I so remember I, when this was about movies and not books. Oh yeah. It was about <laughs> movies and not books. How did we get here? It's such a mystery. We're book people. It's what We're happened. Book um, I don't know. So yeah. Is there any movie that we have neglected to talk about that is a very important film? Um, I feel like there has to be. I'm sure there are. I felt that way about the TV shows. It's like I could, they, I mean, yeah, I could talk about, I will say, um, one of my favorites was Kate and Leopold. Oh, I love that one. I love Kate and Leopold. I love Hugh Jackman. And I love oh, yeah. pretty much all the Meg Ryan. French Kiss, which I don't think you've seen. I have not. Um, was like a romantic comedy. I don't, I don't like a lot of like, I think 2000-ish romantic comedies because a lot of it is like embarrassing humor. It's like that Bridget Jones, like where she just gets embarrassed. I didn't constantly. ever see Bridget Jones. They're I actually like Bridget Jones, but it's like that, that was like a whole style where it was like a lot about doing embarrassing things. But there was like a little point of time and Meg Ryan was probably in like 95% of them. Yeah. Um, French Kiss was one of those, which is probably one of my favorite movies. I mean, it, Meg Ryan and um, Klein, Kevin Klein. Okay. Um, and it's just, I don't think it's streaming on anything, but that it's so funny and so sweet. Um, I love that movie. And I love Kate and Leopold. 
Yeah, I was just thinking there was like a little golden era of rom coms in there, and I think I well oh so I just rewatched this movie. I know you don't like it because we've discussed it, but I will bring it up. I loved Bend It Like Beckham. That was one that oh, I picked up. I picked it up out of a bargain bin at Blockbuster when I was like fifteen. Like there was a four dollar movie that you like because they used to like sell the ones after they were new releases like in the bin. Bought it. Um, had never seen it before, but it cost less than a rental, um, and watched it and then watched it a thousand times. Like just, um, absolutely loved it. I don't know why I don't play soccer. I'm not British. (laughs) I am not from an immigrant family. I do not have a sister planning a big Indian wedding. I don't, nothing in it is, but it's all. Pride and Prejudice? Huh? Pride and Prejudice? Bride and Prejudice? No. No. Ben like Beckham based on Bride and Prejudice. Like, no, no, no. Bride and Prejudice is based on Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. But I um, thought Ben like Beckham was like based on something. No, it's not. Okay. Um, it is. Um, but Bride and Prejudice is, which I also okay. loved, and it has it stars. Um, what's his name from Virgin River? Martin something. Yes, Martin Henderson. And his American accent is terrible in it, but he is adorable. And um, I was not, and as um, Ashwarya Rai and um, Naveen Andrews from Lost is in it and he dances um, and it like, it's fun. It's a musical, like it's a Bollywood Pride and Prejudice music. It, I like that one too. It, I don't love it as much as Bend It Like Beckham, which was one of those things that I like got obsessed with the same director and they came out just a couple years apart. Um, and so I immediately watched Bride and Prejudice cause it was by the same lady, um, who had done Bend It Like Beckham. And I did, I bought that one too and really liked it. Um, and, but like, I loved in that time, like Kate and Leopold, um, what's the one, um, Two Weeks Notice. I liked the Sandra oh, Bullock one. Two weeks notice. Yeah. Love Two Weeks Notice. Great one. Um, Miss Congeniality. Yeah. Love that I one. Sandra Bullock, Brian Reynolds won that. Oh, the proposal. proposal that one's fantastic because yeah. that's the one where I'm like, he's so great because you're like, oh, he's her assistant and he's younger. And I don't know how that's going to play for me. Like, cause it's just not my thing. And then he makes her propose to him in the street. And I was like, I'm in, like, <laughs> oh, like, do you need me? Like better ask. <laughs> um, I love that. And, um, I love, um, Oh, oh, you know what one I really like is um, music and lyrics, which I feel like was not as popular with anyone. I like that one. I liked it. I really liked it. And I... It, it did was, not do well. Huh? It did not do well, but it was cute. No, it was really cute. And we just rewatched it. And I was like, the music is actually great. Like, Hugh Grant is so funny in it. And probably the most attractive he's ever been to me. Yeah. Is that movie. Like, he was a little older and less, like, boyish in that movie. And that worked really well oh yeah while you were sleeping um so april mentioned you've got mail which i love you've got mail and i also love the original which is called the shop around the corner which had jimmy stewart in it oh and yeah it's so, um a little darker than the old days but i love both versions and then while you were sleeping i love i watched that movie every christmas i loved bill pullman i had a crush on bill pullman that seems very um, you <laughs> yeah he's, he's, he's a very uh, me type of me type of character. Um, so I loved what well, I love while you're sleeping. I cry like every time. I still love that movie. Yeah, that's a good one. I just rewatched that one. Um, I yeah, I'm, I'm like going through the catalog because there were a lot of those in there that I loved and like watched. Oh, I loved Return to Me, and I would cry. Oh my gosh, through the whole beginning of that movie. What is that one? That's the one where it was David Duchovny and Minnie Driver and um, his wife dies and she gets her heart. Okay. But that reminds me of the movie. I don't know what it's called. Is that Reese Witherspoon? And yes. Mark yes. Um, just like heaven. I love that. Movie. I love that movie. It is so, I like a little woo woo. I my- also, um, speaking of Mark Ruffalo, um, I also really like 13 going on 30. And that that goes against my kids acting like adults thing, but I think it's because I like Jennifer Garner. So you can only maybe you're only scared of men. Boys. That would actually make sense. Yeah, that would actually make sense. And actually, a lot of um, 
a lot of people do act like teenagers as adults, so it's not as weird. Yeah. Um, I mean, they shouldn't, but you know, anyway. Um, no, I like that one because I liked, I like Mark Ruffalo a lot, actually. He's very, like, charming and engaging. Um, yeah. And I, because I would say, like, not, like, somebody that I would say was, like, the best looking, but, like, right. I, I really like the, the way that he does. Um, oh, The Holiday with Kate Winslet. Yeah, I liked that one, actually. Um, with Jude Law and um, Cameron Diaz. And Jack Black, oddly. But he was actually very sweet in that movie. But I kind of like Jack Black, so. I feel like I'm an outlier. I think so. I liked Nacho Libre. In, uh, the, grand, in the spirit of Napoleon Dynamite, I liked Nacho Libre. <laughs> wow. Like, because I, the, my favorite scene in that movie is like the drive-by baptism. I haven't seen it, nor will I ever. Please do not. And my husband thought it was bad, so I really oh, don't know. No, I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was great. Um, I mean, it's it's stupid. Yeah. I mean, I like a stupid movie. I, if you really like a stupid me. movie, watch Casa de mi Padre with Will Ferrell, which is entirely in we Spanish. Also not got through, we did not get through that one. Yeah, no. We uh, we watched that one. I like a Will Ferrell movie, though. Me too. I, like, I, need, I need to rewatch Talladega Nights. That's a good one. I love Step Brothers, which is completely inappropriate. I actually, we had that on when I was in labor because it took <laughs> my mind off the thing. Um, I find Will Ferrell hilarious, mostly. I do too. Um, Blades of Glory is a good one. Blades of Glory is fantastic and underrated. It's very underrated. Yeah. And of course, Anchorman is amazing. And um, I. Um... Yeah, that's a whole, like, well, that, and that made me think of, is, he's not in Dodgeball, right? Is he in Dodgeball, or is no. he just in an, he's in a movie that has, that has, and then Ben Stiller is Dodgeball. Yes. And Ben Stiller is one of those people, God love him, I always love the idea of his movies, and I will remember them, and quote them, and then go back and watch them, and be like, oh, this is a terrible movie. Zoolander is a great example of that. Um, but that had, that does have Will Ferrell in it, and that was before Will Ferrell was, like, terribly famous. Yeah. Um, so, because I didn't realize it was Will Ferrell as Mugatu for years, and we had watched that movie a, like a thousand times, and every time we would watch it, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that movie's funny," and then we'd watch it, and I'd be like, "This is a terrible movie." Remind me of that next time we say that we're gonna watch Zoolander, and then you spend a year being like, you know, you only I only have one look. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, and then you're like, "That movie was funny." It's not funny. There are funny yeah. parts. Yeah. It did not work for me. My favorite Ben Stiller movie is um, is Heavyweights. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that. You haven't seen Heavyweights? So. It's such a 90s classic. He's the psychotic um, camp director at the uh, fat camp. I have not seen that one. No. I love that movie. That's on Disney+. Plus. If you end up scraping the bottom of the barrel for 90s goodness, I would, I would do that. Mm. And it's a fun one. And... Um, because we did rewatch that one and still thought it was like really hilarious. But he's a he's a side character in it, which I think works better for him for yes. his particular brand of comedy. He's not the main character. Yeah. Um, I actually liked um, Envy, which was a really dark comedy with him and Jack Black. It was not their usual that one and um Duplex, which I think also had him and it was like really and the old lady lived upstairs and was like clogging and like making them insane. I'm not familiar with these. Have you seen um Stranger Than Fiction? No. That's Will Farrell. That one's really good. It's weird. Oh, oh I I don't know if I've seen the whole thing, but now it's like okay, yeah. Emma Thompson is writing his life story. Yeah. And she's trying to tell, and she's telling him he has to die because that's how like good literature ends. And he has to make the case basically for a happy ending. Yeah. Um, so I actually really like that movie because it's about, it is about like why happiness is harder and it actually is more satisfying. And so, and it actually does end happily. Um, so I liked that one. It was very weird, but. Um, you know what movie that made me think of God knows why. Uh, Fool Fresh In with Matthew Perry. I love that and, movie. I love that movie. I saw it in theaters and rented it many a time. Uh, but I love that movie. I love that movie. And I often shout at my husband uh, for obvious reasons when we are outside. The white people are melting. <laughs> <laughs> that I need to rewatch. 
much, I feel like. That's a good one. That's a really, really good one. And I, that was one that I was like, I wish Matthew Perry had been in more movies. Yeah. Because he really was, I love Matthew Perry. Basically Chandler, but. I mean, yeah, but I could watch him be Chandler in, could could he be any funnier? (laughs) I I could watch him be Chandler in anything all the time. I actually like that show that he was in um, very briefly where he was like in grief counseling. Oh, yeah. I don't know that I watched that, but I know what you're talking about. Because he's another one that, like, actually with age has gotten, like, better looking. He's like, I don't know. I liked him in that show. Anyway. Um, Yeah, that was a really good one. I'm, like, casting my mind back to my VHS and DVD collection, all of which had the, like, Blockbuster Bargain sticker on them because we bought a whole lot of secondhand movies. Um and, and also, oh, so my, this is really funny. My mom sent me, um, a picture of, cause you know, when you would just buy VHS tapes that you could, um, record things over. Um, cause we did that all the time. We would like, and we had like a VCR with the two things. So you could like record, you could like bootleg your movies that you were watching if they weren't protected. Um, so we bought like a whole load of VHS tapes at a yard sale. So it was all recorded over, recorded over, recorded over. And my mom just sent me a picture of one of the ones that I had written like over the other label. And it said like Josie and the Pussycats. And underneath it, it said Sarah Plain and Tall. And I was like, that is proof that aliens take over your body when you're a teenager. Because there is no way that me now would ever think that Josie and the Pussycats should go over Sarah Plain and Tall. <laughs> Um, April mentioned serendipity, which I loved. John Cusack had like a whole little bit of time there. It was like serendipity, high fidelity. I feel like there was another one. Um, but I love serendipity. It's kind of bad, but it's like good bad. You know. Um, I have not seen I have not seen that movie. So now I'm I'm coming away from this with a whole list of things that I clearly need to see. Um I think that my two favorite, like, recent comedies that I've seen were um, Central Intelligence with The Rock and Kevin Hart and Spy with Melissa McCarthy. I like Spy, yeah. Spy, I thought that was great. And we just <laughs> watched Central Intelligence. I feel like Central Intelligence is the, like, because we also just rewatched The Other Guys. Which my husband loves an unreasonable amount. Yeah. Um, and... I don't love that one. There are parts of it that I think are really funny, but it basically peaks at when he's screaming at him about like, if I was a lion and you were a tuna, I would swim out into the ocean and freaking eat you. Um, that's like the peak of that movie. Um, but I feel like central intelligence, which like, cause funnily enough, the rock is in, uh, the other guys for five seconds, um, is like the, the full realization of what the other guys could have been if they would have given it a more serious plot, like spy, um, cause it's more of a real action movie, but also the rock wears a fanny pack and, um, it's hilarious. <laughs> like, I think it's hilarious, but I also think that I would watch the rock in basically anything. Um, that, that new Jumanji. I liked that movie a lot. I that a lot. And I was surprised because first of all, I don't like the original Jumanji. And second of all, I don't really care about any of the actors that are in it, but it was really good. I think if you enjoyed that, you probably would like central intelligence because it's Kevin Hart and the rock actually have a really good, they, they are really good together. I think like they play well together, but when we watched the sequel to Jumanji recently, the, um, and I liked that one too. I didn't think it was as good as the first one, but I felt like, how do you, the first one was so surprising. Yeah. Like it was so delightful and really, how do you top Jack Black playing a teenage girl? Right. Like, the surprise of it. Yeah. Um, that does remind me of the movie, what was it called? She's the Man. Oh, I love that movie. I love that movie. Watched that one repeatedly. Um, and Step Up, which I which is a terrible movie, but I enjoy watching as a terrible movie. I have to find uh, hey, Tatum. Um, oh, Channing Tatum. Um, that, yeah, that's a great movie. Um, I should rewatch that one too. That's really good. Oh, Amanda Bynes. Mm -hmm. I know. Then you're, then you're like, oh no. Um, yeah. So like now we've like wittered on about movies for literally ever. Um, and, um, 
Do you guys have any questions for us? All right. Can we think of like 50 more movies to talk about? Because like apparently we could do, apparently we could do movies and TV. Oh, and I family think, stories. I mean. Apparently we could just talk for a long time, which we know already. Yeah. That's not it. Because I will tell you guys, the first time Nicole and I ever roomed together at a conference, I think we stayed up until five in the morning talking. And now we just do that on the first night. <laughs> I forget. It really was like fun. It really was. And I didn't know I didn't know you very well yet. And so we were like kind of sharing like life stories essentially yeah. at that point. And I... Yeah, that was really funny. Like, and we were like, I haven't done that since I was in high school. So that was pretty yeah. fun. It was like, so we will go full on like slumber party at a, at a conference. So we, we already knew that we could talk for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So until next time then, I guess, um, where Is we'll. Any suggestions for topics? Yes. Is there anything you guys would like us to talk about? Go ahead and leave it in the comments here because that would be great because we've kind of now covered a lot of the obvious things that we had already thought of and I don't know that we have an idea for Thursday. So if you guys have something you'd like to see us talk about on Thursday, um, leave it in the comments and we will um, make a list and like take all suggestions into consideration. Um, that would be awesome. So um, thanks yet again for watching and for keeping us company during isolation and we hope that we kept you company too. So bye.